Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Fringe Engineering Labs. Today we're going to be talking about pinball. If you've been reading my blog, then you know that I've been working on building a pinball machine from scratch. And so I've gotten some parts from different places on eBay, um, mostly from people who are dismantling um, older games that can't be restored and selling the parts. Um, a lot of the parts are in disrepair, they still work but they need some cleaning and um, some of them might need new coils and so I'm getting all those parts, fixing them up and then I'm going to incorporate them into my machine and I'm going to do an original play field design and some original uh, driving hardware for um, all of these old pinball parts. So I thought I would show you guys some of the parts that I've got my hands on um, in case you've never gotten the chance to look inside of a pinball machine. Some of these things come from the very early days of pinball with electromechanical games and some of these come from solid state games, uh, more recent tables that uh, took advantage of digital technology. So um, I've got stuff from different years here and I've got them all mounted in the way that they would be mounted in the play field of a pinball game and I'm gonna go ahead and show you what makes up each of these things that you've probably seen if you've played pinball. First up is the pop bumper and this is a pretty iconic piece of play field hardware. Um, these are the things that create a lot of action on the table and um, really throw the ball around. So um, usually what you would see on top of here is uh, sort of a covering with some graphics on it for whatever the table is and um, a light would be inside here and that would flash whenever the pop bumper goes off and uh, the way that these things actuate like most things in a pinball machine a coil down here that forms a solenoid with this uh, piece of steel right here and the piece of steel is connected to uh, what's called a yoke which uh, connects to these two pieces of metal that go up and attach to this guy right here. And that actually pushes down on the pinball and causes it to move away from the bumper. So if we have a pinball here, this pinball would be moving across the table and would come into contact with the pop bumper and would trigger it to come down and pinch the ball against the play field, causing it to um, bounce away from the pop bumper. So the way that the table knows that there's a pinball in contact with the pop bumper is that it actually moves down this little skirt right here. And I'll put it up close to the uh, close-up cam here and you can get a look. See how if a ball moves up next to that, it deflects this piece of plastic on the bottom? That piece of plastic is actually connected through the table um, and floats above the solenoid. Now the reason the solenoid uh, connects to a yoke and goes up on either side of the pop bumper is because you need to leave room in the middle here for this um, piece of plastic. So when the skirt deflects you can see that little nub that hangs down underneath that plastic stem. It goes to either side and when it goes to either side it pushes down on the switch. So. Um, a lot of the switches in a pinball game look like this. These are leaf switches or finger switches. And they're simply just pieces of metal um, spaced apart with little pieces of cardboard or wood board or chipboard. And um, they're, they're the simplest switch you could possibly imagine, really. Uh, you just push one side down until it contacts the other um, metal leaf and then you've made your connection. This one is actually called a spoon switch because on the end of the top leaf, is a plastic spoon shape. And that spoon shape allows the um, side to side deflection of this uh, stem to actually push down on the switch. So no matter where the ball hits the pop bumper, it'll trigger that switch. And when it does that, then the table knows that there's a ball in contact with the pop bumper. If it's an electromechanical table, the switch is probably directly connected to that coil and this drops down and pinches the ball and the ball takes off. If it's a solid state table, the switch might be lowing at, uh, running at a lower voltage than the coil that drives the pop bumper. And this goes back to some logic that tells the pop bumper to go ahead and pop. These were also called jet bumpers um, in some games. It kind of depend on, depended on who made the game. So. That's a pop bumper or jet bumper. This is um, a classic. This is called a slingshot. 
and you usually see these at the bottom of a table right above the flippers. They cause the ball to uh, sort of shoot back and forth um, unpredictably when it nears the flippers so you can't sit and wait for the ball to just fall onto your flipper and then um, stall it and control the shot. Uh, as the ball comes down the table it usually hits a slingshot and then bounces around a little bit. And the way that that works is that the slingshot is behind a piece of rubber and on a pinball play field this piece of rubber is a lot more stiff than this rubber band. I just happened to have this rubber band in my desk when I was doing this. And um, actually, you'd probably recognize it better if, uh, if it had three posts. Most slingshots are a triangle shape like that, and they sort of sit at an angle to the table. But um, what happens is that this uh, rubber forms a very simple bumper that uh, keeps the ball inside the play field. But it also serves as a way for the ball to actuate these finger switches that are on either side of the um, of the actual solenoid. So when the ball uh, interacts with this piece of rubber, no matter where on the front of that piece of rubber or that bumper it interacts, it's going to push this whole front part of the bumper back and make one of these leaf switches uh, close. When that switch closes, it sets off this coil underneath, and this coil is hooked up to uh, a linkage uh, that basically turns this up and down motion into a side to side motion. It's a, a basic lever that pushes out against the uh, rubber bumper of the slingshot. So when a ball rolls along and comes into contact with the slingshot, it closes one of these switches, and then the solenoid fires, and it kicks the ball back away from the bumper and that's a slingshot and it's pretty obvious why it's called a slingshot it uh, it looks like a slingshot it's a piece of rubber stretched around and then uh, it flings the ball so um, these are really cool piece of playfield hardware and they're totally necessary if you ask me to any pinball machine um, some pinball machines don't even have uh, jet bumpers they just have slingshots kind of all around the table and it creates a whole lot of movement and a whole lot of chaos on the table so um, those can be a lot of fun and I still have to go and find the um, bumper posts and the actual rubbers that go on these so um, when I find that stuff I'll do another video and show you what that looks like these are pretty cool as well these are called drop targets and the reason they're called drop targets is because they actually drop into the table when you hit them so uh, the way these work is actually pretty genius the dropping is an entirely mechanical um, action. It's actually a spring-loaded target that just sort of hooks. Okay, I'll show you the linkage. So you can see this is the target that you hit with the ball. And then underneath here, if I push the target back, you can see it falls through. It falls down. And the reason that it does that when you push it back is because it has a little nub right here that catches the edge of this uh, metal piece and so it just sticks when it when it's sticking up it just kind of sticks against the edge and hangs on there and keeps it in the upright position until something comes along and taps it and then it falls down uh, with the spring and um, so there is a coil on here however and the reason for that is that you have to reset this target and um, in order to reset it there's a coil that actually pulls the target back into the upright position and uh, this little hairspring against the back keeps the target pushed forward so that that little nub will catch when it pops back up through the play field and will reset itself. You can see if a ball comes along the table, pops into the target, it doesn't take much force at all to uh, get that target to drop. And uh, after the target drops, um, usually once you've uh, drained the ball or once you've passed a certain part of the table the target will reset and uh, yeah that's all there is to it now I think it's a really cool piece of hardware because um, all you see on top of the table is this little thing that sort of disappears and um, it's just the tip of the iceberg there's this entire mechanical assemb assembly out underneath that uh, most people don't get to see and, and appreciate. So that was a fun one to play with. Um, before I can actually start prototyping a 
play field. I need to get a hold of some flippers, and I need to get a hold of some um, uh, bumper posts and some rubber bits. Um, and then I can actually start putting all this stuff into a piece of wood and start playing with it and um, creating ramps and skill shots and gates and all of the fun stuff that you're used to in a pinball machine. Um, I do have multiples of all this stuff. I've got um, three of these pop bumpers that I got on an absolute steal on eBay. Um, I bought three uh, all together for like 50 bucks, um, which is a really good deal on this kind of thing. Um, these were complete assemblies with the spoon switches intact, and it came from a guy who had apparently disassembled an old Stern uh, hot hand game and, uh, and was selling off the pieces. Um, I got two slingshots from the same guy, and I got two drop targets. And I need to get a hold of some standing targets and some flipper assemblies and a um, uh, ball shooter or ball launcher assembly, and I will be good to go. So um, anyway, that's sort of an overview of some of the Playfield toys in Classic Pinball, and uh, I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope you learned something, and I will be back with more pinball updates as the project progresses. And until next time, I'm Nick. Thanks for watching for Engineering Labs.